So what's good, family? Uh, this is season two, episode six, and it has been a while. Yeah, I haven't been on for good reasons, not because I didn't want to. Been super busy with the website, just building up the catalog, networking, building with people. I had to come through. Uh, this is almost the end of uh, 2019, and I'm only at episode six, so we got a lot of catching up to do. Anyway, on this episode, we're going to dig into some of the mixing, some of the processing that I did for this track called Judgment, which is also on the website. So get ready for a ride, y'all. We're about to check into it. Once again, let's get it in. Episode six. So we are back. This is uh, season two still, episode six. We're really, really way off, man. Um, like I said in the beginning. So uh, it's just good to be back. Uh, this track is actually already on the website. If you guys haven't peeped out the website, uh, that's primarily what's been going on. Uh, this track on here is called Judgment. Um, we basically just going to go through some of the sounds real quick. And I'm going to dig in on some of the mixing that I've been doing and show you guys a little bit of the changes that I've been doing with my uh, production and you know things like that. Of course, I still got the machine, which is the best thing. Love this thing. Um, but anyway, right now, here is the drums with the percussion and cymbals. And uh, let's see what it sounds like. So, I'm going to go through some of the mixing of what I've been doing with my drums lately. Um, as you can see on the kick, I've been using this uh, T-Rex uh, drum bus, man. This is an awesome, awesome thing, man. I've been thinking about getting the Waves bundle. I've been seeing that. A lot of people using Waves. Uh, I used to go, and I used to go here and load a preset, and then I, you know, I would type out the drum, and then I would use a basic like kick drum, and I didn't like the feel it was getting. Of course, it was a stock sound coming from Cubase, which is cool. As long as you EQ it and you know your EQs and stuff, you know, you can do it. But it wasn't giving me that thump that I liked. Um, and I'm realizing that as I'm mixing that each, you know, person that plays this on a speaker or a stereo, they're playing it totally different in different areas, whether it's on earphones and your car. And you always get those, you know, things where it's like, man, why does my mix sound like this in the studio? Then I take it to the car and it's a whole totally different thing. Um, that's a number of things. So, you know, that's what I've been doing as far as with my kick drums. And what I've been playing around with lately with my snares is putting like a small, slight, like reverb on it. And, you know, just seeing how it sounds. Um, I've been using the Fab Filter Pro Reverb and then just going to the small and going to a rich room. And then I would pull it like all the way back, like pull it all to like 1.8 just to give it some ambience to it. You know, it's not even a. A full reverb it's just like a, a, a partial like a one or two percent uh, mix in for the the snare and then I'll go in here and then I'll take the snare now I still use my basic for this one uh, because I go in there you see I go and EQ it um, so I've been putting my uh, snares like I like them real snappy and crisp so I've been putting it at like 0.5 DB at like a, a 4.6 megahertz like kilohertz you know just around the area just to raise the treble I know it's probably like, what are you talking about, dude? Um, so you see I drop all of, like, you know, a lot of the mid out, like negative three in my bass for my snare. It should be, if it's going to be snappy, it's got to be, you know, no bottom to it pretty much. Um, and then I'll put, you know, right here where you see the trouble, I'll put the trouble up a little bit more. Um, depending on how snappy I want it, if it's too snappy, then of course I'm going to pull back on some of the uh, trouble. Cool thing what I've been doing with this is, is that on the filter snare, um, when I add a filter snare to it, a lot of people do their filter snares different. I've been saying, I basically just duplicate this. So I'll duplicate this snare and then I'll go here and put it in the same, like I'll just, you know, drag it down or whatever. And as I drag it down, then I'll go back to the mixer and then put in this wah wah effect that I get from, uh, from a uh, Cubase and just use it in the mix. Uh, you know what? Side note. I looked at a lot of my videos and I realized I say basically too much. So I'm going to stop saying basically. If I do, comment in the section below and say you're saying basically. All right. 
Uh, what I've been doing with my drums, though, is that I would go and add, and this is in Cubase. Uh, of course, you can do it in any DAW, but I would go in uh, Cubase, and the way I track my stuff out recently is that I would use Machine as my foundation for either my drums, some of my melodies, um, and I would just drag over and put them in Cubase. I think this is a really cool feature that Machine has because it makes it a lot easier to get your stuff over from here to Cubase. And, you know, it's just a really cool feature because it makes the workflow a lot easier. Um, and I love how I can play something here and then, you know, just build on the idea here and then take it from here and then go into Cubase. Uh, but I would take some of those uh, sounds here click on this and just drag it all the way over. And as you see, it exports it and then you just drag it over. So that's the cool thing about this. And that's how I usually do my drums and all of my uh, my sounds, you know, stuff like that. Because I might hear a sound here that I like in Machine, you know, just for the idea. And then I'll just drag it over and then I'll go through my process. You know, I'll start playing with some of my VSTs and seeing how other sounds sound with what I just played. Here is the 808s with the drums. Um, this is for machine users. Makes it easier on your processing power for your computer. Here's a tip. So you see this is an actual WAV file here, right? So it's a WAV file, but I played it, right? What I did was to save some of the processing power on my computer just to add because I know I use a lot of this stuff here, which is VSTs. To save some of that processing power from the actual arranger, I went and you could use this for any dog. I went and basically just took, you know, the export of what I did and then brought it back into the session. So now it's a wave and it's playing it as audio as opposed to the MIDI with the effects that I put on. Anyway, here is the music with the drums and some voxes that I threw in, right? So I threw in some singing voxes, which are really, really cool. Uh, the choir I used, the original thing I, I did was I went and I used... Uh, Heat Up 2, which is an awesome VST. They actually have Heat Up 3 now. I uh, did the same thing with that. And the bells and the tweaks um, I put in here. Here's a cool thing, another cool thing I've been doing. So as you can see, I have the same export of sounds, right? I will take this sound, play it out in MIDI, and then I will go back to it, duplicate whatever sound it is, and then make it halftime. So for those who don't know what halftime is, halftime it's basically a uh, VST where you slow down either by bars or you slow down by triplets or one eighth, one fourth, what have you. And then you take the mode, which would be the speed of how much you want to slow it down to either 1.5, 2, or 4 times. So this thing is so awesome. So if you guys want to play around, if you've never experimented with halftime, I suggest you get it because it's really, really cool. I'm going to play it by itself so just you can just hear the actual transition. And of course, I don't even want to say what I put in towards the end, because I told you guys I love this thing. But it is the stutter edit. And the stutter edit basically just, you know, I haven't been dragging it out too much, but uh, I kind of just used it in this sense to just add a little flair from the transition from the verses to the choruses and the intros. And that's basically it. Um, again, guys, if you guys haven't checked out the website, please go to the website and check this out. Um, I know that you guys love coming through and seeing little perks here and there about you know how I do my production and stuff. So I definitely want to thank everybody that has been coming to the page, supporting the page, supporting the music. Thank you guys so much, man. Please, guys, if you guys have not yet um, and you know looked at the website, please go to the website. It's a post music group, inc.wix.com backslash post music and get some of the music, man. I promise you. And if you want to just subscribe to this page, 
Subscribe to the page, man. It'll be greatly, greatly appreciated. Once again, your boy Thesis is here, man. Season 2, Episode 6. Holler back at you guys later. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho.